What is up, everybody? Welcome to the live composing show. My name is Stephen Malin, and I hope you're doing absolutely fabulous here on this random Wednesday in the middle of April. Um, first and foremost, I know it's not Thursday. I know it's not 12, which is when I like to do these streams, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, um, with my current life family schedule, it's just kind of in flux. Um, it's all over the place. So uh, sometimes I can't exactly plan these out as much as I'd like to, but we're just kind of in that that new baby phase. Uh, I, have a, I have six kids, a family of eight. So we're actually make, about to make a big old shift over the next month so that all of our kids are homeschool, uh, which is something we've been talking about for a while. So part of that is just kind of finishing up the school year um, with preschool with our littles and kind of transitioning into the homeschool side of things. So with that, I hope that it, that brings a little bit more stability of the schedule and, and kind of figuring that stuff out. But until then, we're just going to have to kind of fly by the seat of our pants. But that's only about one more month away. So yay, uh, I'm ready for a schedule. I'm a very scheduled person. So <laughs> not having my routine is very challenging. Um, I asked a question in the chat. Uh, please say hello. I, I see many of you watching right now. Uh, please say hello in the chat. Uh, I'd like to know what kind of what kind of latte you rocking this morning, afternoon, whatever it is uh, in your life, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this morning, I'm rocking a homemade vanilla. What do we got? Vanilla, cinnamon, maple, and brown sugar latte. And it is absolutely divine. I call it the cinnamon bun. And it's just the greatest. One of these days, I'd like to, um, one of my dreams is to start a coffee shop. And this shall be on the menu. Mm. Ah, delicious. Um, hey, we got, what's up? Uh, Subin and Jordan and whoever else is watching. I know this is such, such an awkward time uh, globally. Uh, cause here in the Eastern coast, it's 10 AM and that's like the perfect time to not stream because over in the West coast, people aren't up yet. And then, uh, over in Europe, it's already almost the end of the work day. So it's just, eh, it's hard. Uh, I know we have a global audience here, so do the best we can it's from Arthur left-handed. I can see your mouse on the left-hand side. That's right. Here we go. Uh, fun story about that. Um, once upon a time. So I I've been a composer for, eh. Let's just say 18 years, somewhere around there. Uh, longer, if, if you consider the hobby of composing before being a professional composer. Uh, but for the longest time, I, I used a laptop. And so I would use a, one of those little portable mice, mouse. Um, and I would always take my right hand. I'm right-handed. And so I would you know, squeeze that mouse. And we're using a DAW all day. So Pro Tools or Logic or whatever I was using at the time. And I would move. I would just you know, crunch my hand like this. And I would move it around all day long to, you know, move the mouse around the screen. And I started to get carpal tunnel right here in my wrist and it was like debilitating and it was the worst. And so I learned through that process that, oh gosh, I need to change my ways. And that was also about the time I was having really bad back issues. Um, I mean, I had horrible posture when writing music all day. So eventually I came to my senses, got a nicer chair learned how to have an ergonomic setup so I could sit here for six hours, eight hours a day um, without killing myself and having a desk that's the appropriate you know, height for my uh, wrist, which is funny because I actually learned a lot of that um, studying piano because I used to play grand pianos all day and I would have terrible back pain and terrible uh, arm and, and wrist pain because I was playing for six, eight hours a day, practicing and whatnot and performing. Um, and I learned that posture is everything and the way you sit at a piano how high or how low you sit at a piano same kind of concept so I was able to apply that to my studio life and that's where this Kensington trackball and these things are like 20 30 years old um, I used to uh, to scoff at composers who had these but part of my training is I got to work I've gotten to work with a lot of um, a-list composers and a hundred percent of them I mean, 100% of, of the ones I've worked with, at least, they all had this Kensington trackball, and I never understood why. I thought it was the dumbest spaceship-looking thing. It was super dated. Why would you want to use this? And then I watched them in action, and it, I was absolutely convinced. And so I trained myself in one week to become a left-handed mouse user, and I've never looked back. Because with this mouse, I have four buttons, which are macros, and I can assign them to quick functions within my DAW, my browser, whatever. Um, and then I have this little, you know, wrist cushion. I get a new one every couple years. 
Um, and I just leave it right there and boom, and I can move my mouse so fast. And the more monitors you have, the more important it is to have a trackball because uh, it you can decide whether or not like what the inertia is. But when I whoosh, fling it, you can't really see that. But um, when I fling the mouse, it whoosh, the mouse shoots at the same velocity of the inertia that I whacked it with. And so if I move slowly, I can actually have pinpoint accuracy like right here. You see my mouse right now? I can move it as small as I want to or as wide as I want to or as fast as I want to. And the best part is I'm only using a tiny portion of you know energy and of um, my wrist. So my wrists never hurt anymore. Um, so yeah, if, for those of you who have multiple monitors or for those who are really trying to make this a career as a composer, the tools you have actually make or break you. It's funny. Um, and it's such a simple tool. But yeah, there you go. That's that's the reason behind. Uh, and Arthur says, my MX Master 3 is overrated as heck. Trackball would save so much desk space. Yeah, that too. I mean, it's so small. You can take it wherever you go. Uh, Jordan has one on his Amazon wish list. Yeah. Um, if I were to make like a 2024 top five things every composer should have besides like a microphone, I guess, and a MIDI keyboard and headphones, you know, the basics that we think about, it'd be a trackball. But only if you're using a desktop. Like if you're on a on a, a laptop, it doesn't really make much sense to have that. But it's for a multi-monitor setup. That's really the, the best benefit. But anyway, yeah, so I've just become a lefty. Like 10 years now. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But that also frees up my best hand, my right hand. You can't hear that, but, you know, kind of playing. Which reminds me, I forgot to turn on my um, my audio for today. So let's do that real quick. Bam, bam, bam. And bam. Now you can hear it just fine. All right, so uh, what are we doing today? Well, we're working on Aether Mancer. Continuing to work on Aether Mancer. This is a multi-year project. Uh, this is honestly a dream soundtrack for me. This is everything I like to do. Uh, this is a roguelike game. Uh, so it kind of has platforming elements. It has... Um, I'm not sure if you call it permadeath, what, what the official term is, but it's just where, think of Hades, for example. Uh, it's just a popular game in that style where you're on a run and you go as far as you can. And if you die, you go back to the beginning, but you keep, I guess it's the opposite of permadeath. You keep the um, the items and the experience that, that you've unlocked and you've purchased and that type of thing. Being in the ultimate goal being, you know, once you get good, um, after enough runs, you should be able to get to the end and unlock more things. So it's kind of the, the basic design of the game, but every run is different because it's procedurally generated, but it's like, it has rules and limitations. So I, it's, I actually typically hate procedurally generated games because they're too random. They're not designed enough. They're not artistic enough, but I've seen it done well enough, like Dead Cells, that, okay, cool. I think this is a cool concept. Uh, question from Nevo, what interface do I use? The one I recommend... And the one that I use might be different. Um, this is a pro-level interface. This is the RME. You can't see at the moment, but it's the Fireface UFX 3. It's astonishingly good. Um, it's a Thunderbolt. Did I say that right? Yeah, it's Thunderbolt. Um, they also have a... U you could use USB 3 if you wanted to. It comes with both cables. But obviously, Thunderbolt's something like 10 times faster, the data transfer. Um, I can run this thing... If I wanted to, it's kind of stupid, but I could run it at, uh, I'll show you. Let me push the button and just, you know, why not? Hey, we're hanging out. I'll show you. Um, you can also see a really cool picture in the background here. My family and I recently went to the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. Oh my gosh, so cool. Just breathtaking exhibit. Uh, anyway, over here, uh, this is the, the software that you have to download to use the interface. Um, it's the Matty Face series. And right now I'm at 1024 samples because it's a kind of a universal sample rate that works with iTunes, with Spotify, with my web browser, with every sample library from all of time, all works really great at that one sample rate. So I don't change it because there's really no need to, but if I wanted to, I can go to 64 samples and there's no pops, there's no clicks, there's no, there's nothing. Uh, so if I, if I want the absolute best I can. There's just no real logical reason to do that. 1024 is where I, I stay because I've just played around with it enough to know that that's, that's where I want. And then as far as the um, sample rate, I can't change it at this moment because I have a DAW session loaded and obviously I'm streaming. So it would be catastrophic to change it uh, at the moment. But down here, there's a drop-down menu and I can change to any sample rate. 
I don't even know what the highest is. Um, it's it's either double or quadruple 96K. Um, but this thing runs flawlessly um, for what I want it to do. And, and all my sessions are recorded at 96K, 32-bit float. Uh, I could go higher, but there's just no logical reason to have that much um, data usage. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when I'm working with clients, who wants to receive that kind of file? That's just madness. Uh, but what I tend to do is I export MP3 files for auditioning, for demos, for clients. And then if they like it, I'll give them the, you know, the compressed 48K, 24-bit, which is a compressed version of my session, which is double that, 96K, and then 32-bit float. So, you know, super cool. Uh, yeah, Jordan, Ark Encounter was so cool. Didn't get to the museum yet. Yeah, we went to the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum. We spent the weekend. It's about a day drive from where we're at in Atlanta. Um, and with my large family, that's it's a, it's a full day. Um, totally worth it. That was so, so cool. Little, little kids, they liked it because, you know, animals and, and giant boat and stuff. But uh, uh, just for like the spiritual and the, the religious um, side of it and the education. And I just, I love that stuff. I love museums. I'm like a, a history nerd and super fun. I'm a science nerd. So love that stuff. Very, very cool experience. Highly recommend it. Um, whether you're a Christian or not, I highly recommend it because it's just really, really compelling evidence um, for the case of a young earth versus millions of years for creation versus evolution. It's just a very fascinating um, topic, and I, I love that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, so you guys got me all kinds of off topic, but you know what? This is what these streams are for, is to have these fun conversations that we don't get to have like in a text format uh, within Video Game Music Alliance or you know Discord, what have you. Um, okay, so what are we doing today? Well, we're working on Aethermancer. Uh, there is a link in the description to the Steam page if you have not yet wishlisted. Uh, that would be awesome if you do that. It, it has a freakishly large wish list already, so this game's going to be a mega hit. I can already tell. Very excited about that. Monster Sanctuary was a mega hit. It's uh, honestly the biggest uh, success story I've had with any video games so far. I've worked on a lot of games, but that, that one just had a, a massive reach and, and lots of sales. Um, and yeah, I, I'm very excited about working on the next game with Moirai, fantastic people. Um, and so over here, oops, I have this on the wrong screen. Give me two seconds. I have a Zelda music stuck in my head. Go figure. I think I have the theme from uh, Oracle of Seasons or Ages, whichever one it is. Boom. Anybody? Anybody? I haven't played that game in so many years, though. Why is it in my head? It's funny how that happens. All right, over here, um, if you want to check out the Steam page, go check it out. Go join the wish list. But here's some screenshots of um, the latest build. Uh, this game is starting to look really good. If I were to compare it to one game, um, it's probably the most visually similar to Hyper Light Drifter, if you guys remember that game. Uh, just beautiful animations, and I love the um, the dark fantasy aesthetic. It's very steeped in Greek mythology, um, but not just Greek mythology, but like uh, Norse mythology, so like Viking kind of mythology, um, Egyptian mythology. So it's uh, it has a lot of references to creatures from the entire world's history so very cool and i love i just love the, the animations and everything uh so yeah it's going to be a really cool game go jump on the the steam wish list and i just have this up here on my fourth monitor as a visual reference while i'm writing battle music it's just nice to see something uh, and we might jump over there occasionally just to kind of see it and i now have a button if see there it is you can see it now i now have this cool button here that I can hide or show. Let me just see if it works. Yeah, it does. It works on my Steam Deck. Uh, Stream Deck. Sorry, <laughs> I don't have a Steam Deck. That was a missed opportunity. Stream Deck and Steam Deck. That's that's annoying. One letter difference. Uh, but yeah, I now have this button on here that I, I added. So if you want to see what's going on, a little visual reference while we're writing music, that's always super cool. All right, enough, enough, enough. Um, I'm just excited to be here with you guys. Uh, let's see. So today we're working on two tracks. These are battle tracks for the Underground Cistern 
location of the game. So this is all underground. It's um, very watery in nature. And we're kind of still playing around with the, the idea, but uh, I've sent over the current state of the tracks. The team likes them so far. They're not done. But if you join me on the last stream where we started these tracks, or I guess worked on these tracks, um, the original direction was way too cuckoo land, uh, like way too, either way too serious or way too goofy. So I think I've tamed it back and I've found the sound that I'm looking for. And believe it or not, the organ did in fact become a staple instrument as I had hoped it would. I just love organ. Who You don't get to write enough organ, you know? So I have two battle tracks. I have a normal battle track and then the boss battle track called the Deity Battle that I'm about 60, 70% done. And I'm hoping over the next hour or two, uh, we can make some significant progress and even possibly finish both of them. And I wanted to show you, uh, because uh, this is, you know, this composing career thing is a living, breathing thing. It's not like I've figured it all out. I'm always learning and always experimenting. So something I experimented with this past week, which was a big aha moment for me, is because I have my entire soundtrack in one session and I have the, uh, the RAM and the CPU that can handle it just fine, I can load as many instruments as I want, probably up to 500 or more without any kind of clog in the, the system. That's why I built this computer to handle that kind of strain. Um, there's a lot of music in here. Um, and look, it actually looks like, yeah, there we go. It's over an hour of music so far. We're in hour one and then minute 11, even just this particular spot. Um, I have unused music in here as well as used, but, um, Lots of ideas, lots of versions and whatnot. And I'm, I'm maybe halfway done with the soundtrack, maybe only a third. We don't have a, a final track count yet, but it's something like 30, 40 tracks, somewhere in that neighborhood. It depends on the needs of the game, right? And the budget and you know all the things that happen in game dev land that no one really knows anything until it's released the day before release, I guess. Um, but one thing that has been a perpetual problem for me when dealing with large soundtracks uh, and by the way, I've never seen anyone else do this, so I don't have like some template to go to. I don't have anyone to ask about this. Uh, I've just kind of figured it out along the way of how to continuously write a soundtrack in one session. And a big problem that's always come up is, you know, I would write a piece of music and then I would mess with the faders over here, you know, get them all perfect for that track and then I would bounce it. But the problem is I would sometimes have to go back for revisions and fix old tracks and now all my levels are screwed up. And I've never really thought of a solution until this past week. It, it dawned on me, huh, why am I not using automation to reset my volumes, not only per track, but per instrument and per moment? Because there have been so many times where I've gone back, and even though my levels are perfect in my mixer for that track, there'd be a particular moment, like what just happened this past week, is the, the developer said, hey, the, the timpani is super loud in this one moment. And then sure enough, I went back to that moment and it was like freakishly loud, probably because I had turned it up from a previous track that I was working on and didn't think about fixing it for the next. Does that make sense? So um, I had to come up with some solution because like today I'm working on two different tracks, which are two different volume levels, two different intensities and everything. So it does not make sense to use one mix for both. It does make sense to have one template for both because it's the same instruments, but they're playing different dynamics. So it's a simple solution, but I cannot believe it's taken me this long to figure this out. And I don't think that this is a, a Cubase or New Window specific function because um, it's just basic MIDI volume automation. But this was a light bulb for me. So here's what I've done. Here's what I've started to do anyway. Uh, and I might perfect this more as we go. But all I do is when a instrument starts playing. Okay, cool. So we, I know that the harp is playing right here. I go into that MIDI region and then I make sure that my automation is all loaded here and, and in Cubase and New Window, you can actually add multiple automations. Um, but all I do is I make sure CC7, which is the main volume um, parameter, 
I just go over here and I use my pencil and I add a point right at the beginning of the track and then I set that for the exact MIDI volume amount that I want. Now this could be zero all the way up to 127. But for today, I want the harp to be at 80. And what's interesting is maybe later in the track, if I'm gonna use harp again, let's say I was gonna use harp right here, then I would go to the beginning of that MIDI region and then I would set a brand new, whoops, I would set a brand new, hello, where are you? Right there. I'd set a brand new uh, main volume and I'd put it exactly where I want it to be for that particular section. And what this solves is now whenever I go to a, a track to work on, all of my levels will be perfectly set for that exact moment. And then as needed, if I need the dynamic of a particular instrument to go up or down, I can use the MIDI volume uh, to go up and down. And it's such a simple thing, but I, I, I had never done it before. I've always used the faders. So the practical application of this is I've now gone back to my mixer and as much as possible, um, I still need to fix some of these, but any of the instruments that I've used in these two tracks, I've actually gone and I've put them back at zero dB. And then if I need a boost, for a sound that is just too quiet, I will now start using the gain feature. It's called pre-gain um, inside um, Cubase New Window. And I'll just add like a permanent 7 dB or a permanent 5 or 3 dB. And now that instrument at 0 dB is equal to all other instruments. This is not going to work for everybody. But for me, this makes the most logical sense of the process of keeping my mix consistent while still allowing dynamic difference. Now, you might be saying, does this work for all libraries? And I thought the answer was yes. But then I came across um, Best Service. Their plugin is called Engine. And the Engine does not cooperate. <laughs> it doesn't have automations in it. So for example, excuse me, for example, Tom Holkenberg Percussion right here. Oh, and neither does orchestral tools, which is, you know, one of the biggies. So what you, am I, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. Skin drum. So I just chose the wrong one. Uh, so skin drum here, you see it's using the engine two plugin. So this guy right here, if I double click, if I go to um, main volume, if I were to go in here and start messing around with it, it doesn't do anything because it's not even attached. So instead, I've been using the articulations slash dynamics feature within Cubase New Window. And it actually lets you choose a dynamic for a section. And then once you choose that, you can go to dynamic mappings if you want, and you can choose exactly what that term even means. So right now I have pianissimo, the PP selected, which what it's going to do is it's going to read all of my velocities at 60% value. So if I have a velocity of 100, it's going to read it or play it back at 60. And then if I have a volume of 100%, it's going to cut it down to 30%. So the, the beauty of this is now at any point, I can just select the dynamic that I want and think a little bit more musically instead of just having exact numbers. Um, and I don't really have a choice for that particular instrument. Um, and here's what that would look and sound like. And then we'll actually write some music here. Uh, so, for example, the skin drum right now soloed, that's at pianissimo. Okay, now let's put it at mezzo forte. It's wildly different. So it's important that I can choose exactly what I need that mixes well. And then over here in the mixer, I don't have to do anything to it. It's set to 0 dB and it's going to stay there. And all the levels are going to look great. So I'm experimenting with this to see how it feels. And we'll see how it goes. So anyway, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Hope you have a lovely day. Uh, let's get working. Uh, so right now it's about 70% done. Um, I still have some music to write over here in this blank space. So let's just kind of see how that feels. <laughs> Cool.
cool. I can already feel like this is a little bit quiet. So all I have to do is go to that moment. It's at 75. Let's try 80. And these numbers in MIDI volume land are extreme. So even an increase of five out of 127 could make a big difference. And so I'm gonna be using the solo feature, which is this button right here. I have it mapped to the S button. So I can turn it on and off to solo it by itself to see how that affected the mix. Cool, I like that. Um, I wanna also experiment with playing around. Let's see. I wanna play with the articulations ever so slightly here. You can see them right there, right? Um, I haven't done this yet, so I want to play with, uh, it just sounds slightly unrealistic. So I'm going to play with the articulation. So I, I feel like maybe Marcado Long would be a good way to go. Oops. Let me reset. I accidentally changed my, uh, <laughs> there we go. Put this back on uh, quarter notes for easy navigation here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I just wanna make sure that this. So that's Marcado Long. Let's just play around for a moment to see what feels best. Mainly right there. It's a little weak. So let's make that yeah a little bit shorter. So marcado short. Yeah, but and maybe like right there. We can change it back to legato. Just gotta experiment with the uh, articulations. So we actually do need to sneak this in as a 16th note in between. I'm gonna have a fade out there with my mod wheel. So let's keep it musical. Yeah, let's try again. That feels really good. So I'm switching between three articulations. I don't always do that level of detail, but I think in big lead lines, that is essential uh, producing. I also feel like that could use a counter melody of some sort. So maybe we can experiment with here. Simple little melody, right? There's some C minor. Let's grab the sketch piano. So we're in C minor. F minor. on this so so I want either a lower voice so it's that's like the human range a uh, horn melody so either something up here so if this is the horn octave, and you want something either high or low to be the counter melody. So 
sounding yeah. simple. Na, na, na. Um, I don't want a flute because the flute is the next melody. Um, na, maybe a trumpet. I could do that, but that's a terrible articulation for it. We already hinted at them earlier with All right, didn't we? Yeah, right here. It's a little counter. so I'll stick with that. There it is. Hey, King Zero, what's up? I, th I think it's subtle enough, but it, 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 it adds some motion that was lacking. It might be nice to double that. And another... So far, so good. Uh, I need another repetition of that melody. So if the first one is... I want the second one to go up. Back to the piano we go. It's better than, you know, just repeating. But which instrument to use? Hmm. We can still stick with the horn. 
That's not a bad idea. Let's just feel it out. I just got to cut some material here. Uh. I hate doing this, but it's just, it's what it needs. So here we go. If we kill, this is why I keep a, a new session for each version. Um, where's my button for kill? Delete. If I delete all that, it should sound better, better like this. sounds better for the repetition to be a literal duplicate of the melody in a different instrument, but then we're going to cut it short by jumping to the next section in a different key center. Ah, this got cut off. Maybe four beats. This feels better. a bit more to write so uh, let me figure out my time codes here i'm happy with what we've done so far though 1129 i need to get to 1329 which is here so let me push that back that looks good uh let's make that our time code like our, our marker so realistically i can get by with uh these are very fast sections like that b section barely had a chance to breathe there's only eight bars C section was only eight bars. So battle tracks are just so fast that you can squeeze a lot of material in them. So I'm not concerned if, you know, if I have to write a new section, but where I can, I like to reuse material for the sake of consistency. <laughs> hey, good morning. We got Matt, Demi, Demi Drew. The Tune Factory. Lots of new people just jumped in. What's up? Yeah, I mean this this track is just not balanced because it's it's not fully written yet. Shaker is bothering me. Um, let's do this. Make sure that everything. I'm probably just gonna hit pianissimo. <laughs> Pianissimo is for this track. We're going to call it 40% and 75%. Just so it has. That's better.
think I like adding snare sooner. That was good. I like that. It's not so in your face either now that I've, I've played around with the volumes. If you missed the first 20 minutes of this uh, episode today, go back and watch that. I talked so much about um, my new process for balancing my volumes by using the main volume CC7 within one full soundtrack in one session. And it's, it's a game changer, really. So even though this snare is super quiet, it makes perfect sense in the mix. And this allows me to write at the actual volume instead of um, like the actual mixed volume instead of writing something super loud and then it doesn't fit. You have to keep mixing over and over again. Why? Save time. That's the F on switch. I missed one right there. It's fine though. I could just pop it down an octave and it should all fit perfectly. There we go. That feels better. I feel like we need to add some uh, brass stabs to double all of the timpani yummy goodness happening there uh, with the low strings. So yum, bum. So this is my low brass patch, which is a combo of bass trombones and tuba. And all I need to do is create a uh, key switch for do -do 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 -do. Uh, wherever it's hiding. Let's go back to our eighth notes here. Do -do 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 -do. Just got to move this up right here. Can you even see that? Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's just tiny on your screen. It's tiny on my screen, so it's fine. Uh, we just need to move these to, let's do mm, probably staccato, but let's see what Mercado short sounds like. Dude, that's awful. Okay, let's go to Stockitissimo. That's better. And then we'll make our MIDI volume louder. If you do 127, you're going to blow people's faces off. So overkill. 70s and 80s is usually a, a safe spot. If you want Fortissimo, then go to 100. What's up, Sarah? Zat, Zeke? Wow, got lots of Ambi Ambientronics. Howdy. That'll feel good with uh, these timpani. That would feel nice to go bump, which I already have one of these hanging out right here. So let's, uh, the beauty of using key switches is that you can uh, copy and paste them really easily like this. Oh no, where'd he go? Where's my wah moment? Where's my inception moment? Was it in my other track? It could have been. Which is totally fine because, yeah, there it is. Totally fine because I can just pilfer that. Go back. Where's my wah? I don't actually want like a bram, like a trailer bram, but I do want. <laughs> That's kind of pointless. Uh, let's do this. Yep. 
let's do like a Mercado long to get that, that big beefy yummy goodness um, and then we'll do like a, a tail you can't see that boo there you go I'll do like a little little tail and then we'll make sure the volume is nice and chunky <laughs> that long so maybe I'll just try the uh, Mercado short articulation to kind of solve all that Wah, off so just one beat so we can kill all that cool and then we'll just make it quieter yeah this should this be an octave lower you think what do you guys that's a little too much yeah I don't like that Cool. Like a harp needs to do a harp thing. Classic harp move. I don't do pre programmed glissandi, I just play them in. Let's just do a, a final two beats. And what we'll do is. I kind of played it the opposite that I wanted. I want soft to loud. There it is. My beautifully programmed. <laughs> so colorful, so majestic. It's like a rainbow. All right. Um. Oh, that's pretty. And wrong. Well, ain't that cute, but it's wrong. There we go. Yeah, Adam, I, I was just talking about that at the beginning of the stream that, um, yeah, that picture, that was a picture I took. Uh, my family and I just went up to the Ark Encounter in Kentucky and the Creation Museum and had an absolute blast um, for the last several days. Um, exhausting trip because it's pretty far from where we are, but tons of fun. Absolutely loved it. So it's awesome that you, you just went. Yeah, it's absolutely ginormous. Four levels tall. Jeez. Um, super cool. I'm a, I'm a science nerd, so I love that stuff. I don't know. Did I just delete my entire recording? Ah! Lame. Let's 
What's up, Chew? Pretty simple rhythm here. I don't want to get overly complicated with a tom rhythm. If you start going, it just like completely destroys. It like steals attention that it doesn't need to. But I want a different timbre of perk. That's not just those low drums the whole time. So this will be a nice change, even if it's just for like half of a section. Because I feel like even that right there, that would probably be a good D1 section. And I could probably squeeze two uh, sections out of this. Uh, just based on the remaining number of bars left. Maybe I can play with the tempo ever so slightly to, to, to get it one more, a few more seconds, but let me clean this up and then duplicate it. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, go check it out. Go plan a trip around it. It's pretty spectacular. And I was saying earlier, even if you're not a Christian or you don't have any religious beliefs, um, it's just marvelous to see all that. <laughs> Jordan, that's awesome. I love that. I didn't have that opportunity to just ditch, ditch the kids. <laughs> I had to walk around with them all day. So yeah, I, I felt very rushed. I should, if possible, if you're going to go, go get yourself two days for the ARC and two days for the Creation Museum. If you try to do it in one day each, it's just so rushed. You, you don't get to read it all and, and enjoy it all. You have to, you have to ch pick and choose, you know. Probably saw like 80% of each, but I kind of rushed through it. So what I'm going to do here, sorry, my mic is really far away from my face. Um, there we are. See, it almost, this would probably make a really good four bar outro that I could probably sneak in to make for the loop point. So you can't see that. There we go. See the last four bars? There's four bars remaining. So either I need to just slow down the whole track to get it or create a little outro that'll loop really well, which is probably the better option, but that hits my two minute mark. Uh, the devs are not super strict on these tracks having to be certain lengths, but I've basically, I've been contracted for a certain amount of music. And so long as all the tracks add up to that, that is the goal. Uh, and I have to just keep track of all that. But when possible, the creative challenge is to try to make a two-minute loop. That's exactly two minutes. I'm capable of doing that. Um, it it kind of keeps clean, things clean. Uh, but of course, you know, occasionally I have to go to 206 or 210, 215 or 158, once whatever. Um, you just got to do what what fits the track best. But creatively, I want to try to to hit the two-minute mark. <laughs> section and set a new marker so I can keep starting there. Make it work. Yeah. Yeah, the tune factory, it's true, it's true. It's just not enough time to really absorb it and contemplate. <laughs> for this track so because we just came out of this like pokey ba -ba 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 -ba, triplet stuff it would be nice to get back to a steady rhythm that's why i'm doing the toms um let's go back to the organ because that's been my it's a little bit darker again What 
a simple but interesting little baseline there. Uh, I want to see what I can do with that. I intentionally kept it very, very, well, basic. Hey, what's up, Micah? Um, today, he's rocking a nice dark roast coffee that has notes of dark chocolate. Ooh, yummy. That sounds good. This is a Nicarag Nicaraguan blonde roast. That's my favorite. Because it has almost like a, um, yeah, probably like a white chocolate kind of taste, naturally. So I'm adding, I have cinnamon, vanilla, maple, and what's left? Brown sugar. It just kind of, just a little bit of each, and it adds this, mm, like a cinnamon roll. I want to double that with low woodwinds. That sounds fun. So let's do... I thought I had those out already. I guess not. Um, I'm about to just add it. Right, so I'm gonna do Winds Ensemble Legato. Um, let me go back to the patch here. I think I'm just going to double, I'm going to use the um, contrabass clarinets because I've used those in like the, the marsh swampy kind of places. <laughs> this in the low strings octaves hello where are you whoops whoops copied it into itself hey it's okay also kind of has that pirate ship kind of feel which is what we're going for
These are free, people. This is my new favorite string patch because it's for free. And I can recommend it to all you people. Go download Sign Player. It's a free tool. It's a free download from Orchestral Tools. They have all of these right here that you're seeing. These are all their free libraries, and they're all phenomenal. I'm a massive fan of Orchestral Tools, mainly because they're Metropolis Art series. They have the Peteris Vask strings. I've done, a rev I've done a review of all these things, by the way, so check it out on YouTube. Tom Holkenberg Brass, which I'm using today. Tom Holkenberg Percussion, which I'm using today. And their stuff is top notch. Um, but they have the Helix, which is a free string ensemble. It's only two sounds. It is my two favorite sounds, spiccat spiccatos, which are short, and sustains. There's no mic positions, but they kick booty. And I've been using them all day. You didn't even know it. They're so snappy, and you can play them fast. Especially when you double them with woodwinds. It just sounds snappy. That it's goofy enough. It kind of has a haunted house, haunted, oh, not like a, a haunted house, but a haunted pirate ship, which is the kind of monsters and things that will be there. So, so I like keeping in that harmonic minor. So I'm going to do a low octave strings and then a high octave strings doubled, and that should fill out the entire section. And we'll be good to go. But I got to get the rhythm. That way, the um, the start of the measure is the C, which is the same note that I, that I start with. Do it. Classic Steven move right there. That's the most me thing. It feels like I'm copywriting myself. <laughs> But that's like, that's just my style. It's fine. I like to start with um, a slower rhythm. And then towards the end of a phrase, I like to speed it up either with 16s or triplets. It's just funny that I f maybe finally understand my own style. That works for me. That's ah, so hard to play. I don't want to cheat. Do it slow. I didn't even do my own dang rule. want to play. So let me do this. I had it all right until here. This is just garbage. <laughs> yeah, let's just show the keyboard for fun. Ah, 
second time I'm going to do that. Here we go. enough <laughs> i'll fix it in post dying words last words i'll fix it in post um everything was a uh, 16th note except for the the end so i'll just you know not touch that for a second let's do some epic quantizing <laughs> Not bad. I'm going to redo that last part. Let's see. That. Redo. So I'll do all sixteenths until the last. That's what I want. I want to say the triple to the very last. There it is. That way I can double it with the percussion and it won't be. Triplets, if you're doing all duple, it's like 4-4, four, four, whatever, um, then triplets, I think, should be reserved for special moments like ramping up to the end. It shouldn't be the whole two full bars of it, just like the last couple beats. It'll help pro propulsion, propel it. Yeah. But -ba -la -ba -la -ba -la -ba, just like the last two beats. And those are all 16th triplets that are now horrifically not quantized. Give me a second. <laughs> To get it all set. Sweet. Save. <laughs> what game is this? It's Aethermancer. It's in the title. <laughs> hooray, hurrah. Okay. Oh boy. That was a lot of effort. Like that would feel good to double in wins. That's kind of cool, but I, I accidentally put the whole thing on the wrong beat. It's a nice echo. Yep, it's a roguelike mixed with Monster Tamer. Just like Monster Sanctuary was the blend of Metroidvania and Monster Tamer. This is a different genre of Monster Tamer. So good. Let's uh, produce it up. Maybe, maybe, kind of. 
kind of, sort of, huh? <laughs> Needs more than that though. That that's just the backbone. It needs a main melody. Might be too short, but that might be. A great loop <laughs> point. Because I kind of just played in, I didn't save it, but that kind of functioned like a loop point because this was kind of a. <laughs> two bar outro. Dun, 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 dun. One job. Uh, this is, hold up. Uh, this is going to be intro. This is going to be a, I'm going to call it loop in. So the final loop should be this instead. I think this is a situation where to add more music does not help the track musically. Um, and since, you know, the way that I contract is just a, a pool of minutes. This does not have to be a two minute track. It's just, that was the goal. And I feel like it works without, I don't want to overkill this D melody. Just let it be what it needs to be. Especially since the rest of the sections are all eight bars as well. It just feels right to have a two bar outro. It, it just makes it easier too. More listen. You could listen to it more times on repeat without it getting too. <laughs> to double the strings. of some sort especially since I should already have that copied so let's go to maybe the synth <laughs> Cool. 
here, I'm going to go. That way it, it mirrors what we did earlier with the timpani. And we'll do the same thing with the brass and the timpani. We need to make sure the main volume is, is back down to a reasonable level. So I'm actually going to double that over here in the timpani. Let's see how much louder it is. Got to be careful. Cool. And then we'll do the same thing in the low brass. Whoops. Let's just move it like this. But we have to make sure that the um, correct articulation is chosen way up here. So I think we landed on stockitissimo as the preferred. There we go. That's going to feel cool, especially when we do the loop point. I'm happy with that. Hey, thanks so much, Jordan. You're awesome. Oops. this appropriate volume level would be great.
Yeah, uh, I had the idea, so it, it just kind of ran with it. I'm going to double the synth dulcimer down in the uh, Celesta to give it a little more shiny on top. Somehow this was missing from all the parts. Uh, I'm guessing from here too. Let's uh, audition some of these, make sure that they look good, sound good. I like the delay too, it helps. Awesome. Hey, Togap, I want to hear more about this uh, monster taming game. Are you writing music for it or are you making a game? Either way, super cool. <laughs> section to give it a little bit more homey feel especially the outro like right here <laughs> nice outro because it, it actually connects the old with the new some like connective tissue here in the percussion the only challenge though is getting these levels right and this is why that main volume cc7 is so vital for everything there we go keeping those volumes consistent is really key and the only way to do that is to make sure that these are all one MIDI region. But then I'm going to chop it up by track. That way it doesn't get confused with the other track. So here's the Seed Shaker. I'm sorry, the Tom Holkenberg percussion. It needs to roughly stay the same. Hey, uh, super cool, Togat. I'd like to hear more, please. Hey, you have a whole audience here, people that love Monster Tamers, so tell us more. Okay, not gonna lie, this is straight up Final Fantasy V, and I'm okay with that. Just the, the fourths. 
this. It's not copyright. With like the tremolo strings. It just felt right. It's the beginning of a battle. Oh, I need a Mr. Orc chime here. Right here at uh, bar whatever, 1408. There it is. listen to my uh, monitors for a minute just to kind of take it your break from listening <coughs> i made a couple of tweaks in there uh i feel like the balance is quite good uh, it just it feels a little arrangement wise it feels a little empty in certain moments and that's not a mix issue that's just a, a writing issue so let's try to fill this out i feel like uh using the upper octaves of the organ might be helpful
I didn't want to copy that when I really wanted to play it, so there's layout. There we are. All right, so these are all 16th. Knotes. <laughs> um, Ooh, see by now my favorite key. It's a good one. I think it's the darkest key, personally. It favors organ very well. One job, people. Why does that sound weird? But da 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 da. It's all in there. I just be like the. I'm just gonna uber quantize it to be perfect. Excellent. Pitch bend in there. Hello, Sarah. You're not late. You're just early for next week. Hey, what's up, Matt? Hey, Matt. The myth. The legend. Uh, fun fact. Mr. Matt here. Matt the Kenyan just wrote for a Tetris game. What? Who are you? And who are we to be in your presence? Thank you for blessing us with your, your presence, kind sir. <laughs>
feels weak all of a sudden. Uh, I think I need to boost these uh, woodwinds here. It's a little bit more, a little choppier. Maybe right there. Are they so weak? What have I done? Ah, I see, I see. I made a classic mistake. What a noob. I accidentally changed the articulation with a key switch that need not be changed. What a noob. It's okay, guys. It's my first day. Everybody's, everybody has a first day, right? Um, no, I just to figure out where the key switch is. I think it's like C6. C E E6. What a, what a note. Is that it? Found it. What is Matt saying? Uh, hey, Sarah. Oh, Jordan says, Matt, dude, I have like four episodes left. So Composer Code, love it. Yeah, Composer Code is, is legendary. For anyone that needs a good podcast, um, Mr. Matt here has interviewed many of the greats, many of the great game composers that are household names. Incredible interviews. Um, yeah, I hope he'll do more. thing is a little tricky when you have a million instruments playing at once. There we go. And that's it, that's why it feels so naked. So let me go back over here if you want to watch, uh, and I'm gonna duplicate it a bunch of times. Just eighth notes, chick, 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 or sixteenth notes. Chick, chick, chick. <laughs> So subtle. Uh, and then the loop will actually, that's the intro, so it'll actually loop back to 1408. Let's test the actual loop. I 
I feel like this needs a little bit more uh, brass of some sort just to kind of fill it in. I might use euphoniums just to kind of give a darker uh, like chords in the background instead of straight up horns. Um, but we just need some kind of chord structure here. Uh, That's the D section I'm referring to. I like everything else. This is not a pop song. There it is. What song is that? What is that? That's a that's like a Final Fantasy or something. Oh man, what is that from? Please help me. Uh Or it's some classical tune. I don't know, but I need to I need to know what this is. It's not Beethoven, but it's like that's got to be a classical tune. I used to play, uh, back in college days, I used to play in orchestras. I played so many hundreds of, of classical and Baroque music and just playing violin in an orchestra. Something about it, you get exposed to so much. This is either like Wagner or... I don't think it's a film soundtrack. It could be. But it's like really hitting me right now. Is it Golden Sun soundtrack? Like, what is this? It's just lodged in my memory. here ah oh, i know what i forgot i forgot to put this in the nickel harpa drone that's one of my staple instruments of the soundtrack why is it so quiet see what a, what a midi volume can do all right so all of these need to be about 80 velocity so that they play quarter notes instead of sixteenths or eighths. That's better. I want it to be a drone. Super sus. So that already will add a lot. <laughs> Um, but ah, let me write these down because this is why I have a dedicated line marker just for chords, just so I can figure this out. Let's do the same thing twice. G. So this entire thing is G7. I know that because <clears throat> it goes back to the minor, minor one. So chord-wise, 
here. So C minor. Yeah, I mean it's it's basic. in writing so that's uh, it's first inversion C minor and then So we have A flat, and then uh, B diminished. Yeah. So far, so good. That happens twice, I believe. Aha, then it changes. Then it goes up to a G, so I think it's the same chord, though. Yeah, it's just a changing of inversion to second inversion, so C minor over G. Say hey, Anton. Anton is one of the game devs of Aethermancer, and it's always such a pleasure and honor when he comes and joins us. So, howdy. Welcome. So, I feel like here. We need something that's kind of out of the way. I feel like I need to play half notes, meaning don't hold it for the whole time. It's just a little bit too um, legato and sustained. So I'm going to do one, two, off two. One, two, off two. So on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off to give it more of that pulsing effect. And I'll probably double it with a delayed choir. That way it has that wah, 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 wah effect, which is like the staple of the Monster Sanctuary soundtrack, if you remember that. <laughs> so cool with the uh, the flute so and for the last part I don't want to give away the suspension till the end and then what's happening no F E flat it's in the bass actually so, it doesn't really matter because the bass is below what I'm playing, so it's okay that I have it flipped, if that makes sense with, with the inversion. I'm doing the opposite of what the bass is doing to help fill more frequency, more, more notes. Like, what I mean is because the horns and the euphoniums are in the mid-range of the orchestra, it doesn't matter if I'm playing the correct inversion or not because below it, the basses are playing the inversion by only playing the single note, which is the, the base of the inversion. That's why I don't care. 
But I still want the note change. So if this was the bass, then it would have to be. But because I don't care, I'll put it in the top. Which helps to fill in the chord, which is lovely. Nice little punch in the face for the loop. Cool. Uh, I think for these two, I will be legato. Excuse me, I'm gonna do three eighth notes per instead of half notes. So if you can see what's going on here, I'm not gonna extend it all the way. Uh, so imagine real players, they're gonna go, bomb breath, bomb breath, bomb breath, bomb breath. It just gives them the same equal power each time instead of trying to, right. it consistent. I'm actually about to have a, a, a big brass session in a couple months that I'm preparing for, for some new Dark Dice music, and I'm having to think a lot more about this and the woodwinds and the choir. You got, you have to plan for the breaths. Even though this is digital, you still got to musically do it. mentioned I think this would be cool to double in the choir. I don't know if I should copy it exactly. Let's see what happens if I do. Ah, so cool. It's just too low. The only difference is that delay is going to murder us, so <laughs> we need to shrink it down so the delay is not so in our face. sensitive because it's a custom built patch from an 8DO library. I, I contact mutilated it. So it, it just it's very sensitive to the volume switching. Yay, it has that really cool bouncing pulse effect. Be this delay line of the choir now that we we've created a pair let's do the same thing with the euphoniums at the beginning just turn it up it 
give them a breath or two. Like right here, they probably just need a breeze. Right about there. We'll just create a little fade. the choir for the second half. guys let's take like a one minute break i'll be back with one more battle track and we'll call today okay don't go anywhere
right, friends. You ready for some more? Me too. I only have maybe 15, 20 minutes left. Um, but let's do our best to make some more progress on the next track, which is another battle track in that same area of the game. And it is for the boss battle called the Deities. The Deity battle. Uh, so... Do, 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 do. I'm already, you know, 60, 70% done on this one as well. It's just a basically a more intense style track of what we just listened to. Um, not as not nearly as casual or or laid back. It's much quicker, much more intense. And I really want to lean into the organ on this one even heavier. Um, -da 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 -da. This one should be a proper two minute track. We'll see. I'm pretty close to that length anyway um here we go let's just see what we have so far i have i don't remember what it sounds like we're gonna find out together <laughs> are so good. Building tension. I feel like I need to add some chimes in here. So give some more like one root power. Flipping octaves and flipping uh, melody. I, I kind of like following the entire melody. It, it's a little bit more epic.
need. Then. friendlier. I love our pluses. That's such uh, transition material, you know. I love that, but it needs to be doubled with the euphoniums like we did earlier. Batman, isn't it? <laughs> Woo, that's epic. Love it. like that. <clears throat> Something like that, right? That, that'd be fun. Uh, I'm trying to think of our main theme is so maybe that'd be kind of cool so yeah That's the perfect spot for that. Just to kind of sneak it in there. Not the whole track, but just this one big epic moment. Big horn melody. That's the main theme of Aethermancer, so.
Um, we just need to... Play around with the articulations a little bit. So, up here, this needs to be legato, first of all. You guys still with me? You hanging in there? I'm having fun. Hope you are. I'm having fun whether you're, you're here or not, but I just, you know, that's why I turned the camera on, so you can have fun with me. So this part. I want to really get in here with the key switches. So all of these need slightly shorter. So maybe like... are supposed to be everything's eighth notes that's what's going on i don't think it needs to change Double it with something that would really give it some power, um, which is probably going to be, well, lots of things. So, Cool. 
<laughs> Why not? Um, let's try to get that lined up. Not bad. Got a little sloppy. But... There it is. Step input to be faster. Uh, step on, step here. Where are we? so weird. Hello? Ugh. Like stuck in undo land. Let's double that with maybe strings. And woodwind. 
Hans. Back on track, yeah. Um, I need to do the key switch thing. What about the, the air who? No. No air who. Nope. Okay, I didn't know there was going to be a stream today either, so we're in the same boat. Also, hello. I want some kind of like almost baroque. In the low strings. Let me think for a second. Um. This entire section is just. Um, G sharp diminished seven. To A minor. All right, uh, which works nicely. So bum bum but ba 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 bum ba da ba 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 bum bum. It's a little corny, um, but it's also very video gamey, which is appropriate. I mean, it's pretty in-your-face chromatic, right?
interesting. Um. <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> You're funny. Oh, this should be the bass line. Whoops. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that double octave down there. That's so good. Ah, oh, so good. I love organ because it has the natural double octave in the reeds. Pipes, whatever they're called. And that'll go really cool. If it's too cheesy, fine. But I, I want to get the idea out. You don't know until you try. Um. Uh, the drum beat's not doing it any favors. It's, it, it's too relaxed for something so weird and chaotic. Just hold on, guys. Just, just hold on. So, um... Something like that. We gotta add lots of tension. out of this thing, right?
this all works it's really well. hate that new section <laughs> that's okay it's okay you don't have to love everything uh it just doesn't fit <laughs> Let's uh, rebuild this. out of place like <laughs> uh, yeah let's make the tough call um this is just what needs to happen it's good to experiment but i need to just chop off everything after that point and just kill it <laughs> right it just it needs to die uh, that is the loop right there. It doesn't need to be longer. By 19, 11, 03. I mean, we're like 15 seconds short. So this is a one minute, 45 second track. But it, it feels good. It feels right. to make sure that this final section has um, a final melody. <laughs> Who 
should take that over. Maybe strings? Oh. <laughs> Okay, I gotta finish this up, but maybe I just started too big here. I might just be psyching myself out here. It may not be boring to continue that. Maybe it's the harmony that's that's screwing it up. For the sake of time, I, I'm just going to have to quit, but I'm going to, I'm going to say, replace 1371 to end with this. That way I can just kind of get it in. Uh,
we go. So I have to modulate back to So I'm going to specifically say last chord equals F diminish seven to lead back to F sharp minor. It's kind of like the last important note here. I can make that change later. If it goes. finish that up for sure um in the next couple days but there you go all right friends that's all the time i have for today thanks for hanging out for the last three hours wow we got a lot done uh so thank you very much for being a part i look forward to seeing you next week in one shape or another and somehow maybe the following week we're gonna have to decide on that but yeah appreciate you guys have a lovely day and 